Lena Horne, whose beauty and sex appeal often overshadowed her vocals, was one of the first black artists hired to sing with a large white band, and the first to play in Copacabana nightclub. Though she didn't become a major movie star, she is credited with paving the way for other black actresses to get bigger roles. Lena Horn, who pioneered the black performance by inking a long-term deal with a major Hollywood studio, and later rose to popularity as a singer around the world, passed away on Sunday night in Manhattan. She was 92. She passed away at New York Presbyterian or Wilt Cornell Medical Center, and her son-in-law Kevin Buckley made the announcement. She called Manhattan home. President Obama said Mrs. Horn had worked relentlessly to further the cause of justice and equality in a message of sorrow. Mrs. Horn first became into notoriety in the 1940s, went on to become a recording and nightclub sensation in the 1950s, and triumphantly returned to the public eye in 1981 with a one-woman Broadway show. Though she was so light-skinned that other black children had teased her as a youngster, accusing her of having a white daddy, she languished at MGM for years because of her ethnicity. She might have become a famous movie star, but she was born 50 years too early. The role of Julie was instead given to a white actress, Ava Gardner, whose singing voice was dubbed when MGM turned Showboat into a movie for the second time in 1951. Mrs. Horn was no longer under contract with MGM at the time. And her application for the role was never given any consideration, according to James Gavin's Horn book, *Stormy Weather*, which was published last year. Additionally, Mrs. Horn's own marriage to a white man, the well-known arranger, conductor, and pianist Lenny Hayton, who served as both her and MGM's musical director for many years, took place in 1947 in France. Was kept a secret for three years. Into 1945, all black cinema musicals, she received proper guidance. Mrs. Horn successfully performed both singing and dancing when she was led to 20th Century Fox for the musical *Stormy Weather*, which had a lot of singing and dancing but not much applause. The musical's title number, which would later become one of her signature songs, closed the production. She played the bold, seductive handmaiden of the devil in Vincenta Minnelli's first movie, MGM's *Cabin in the Sky*. Mrs. Horn was outspoken in her condemnation of the treatment of black soldiers when touring army installations for the USO. The USO was upset as a result, and she recalled, "And they informed me that I would no longer be able to send you on any official business trips. I was then branded as a bad little red girl." After her employment with MGM ended in 1950, Mrs. Horn later asserted that she was blacklisted and unable to make pictures or television for the following seven years. Due to this and other factors, including her affiliation with leftists like Paul Robeson and W. E. B. Du Bois. This was not entirely accurate. However, as Mr. Gavin has shown, that during the 1950s, she frequently performed on your show of shows and other television programs, and that she found more acceptance on television than nearly any other black artist. Additionally, Mr. Gavin and others have asserted. That her lack of film work was due to issues other than politics or ethnicity. 
Mrs. Horn, who had always been vocal about civil rights, stepped up her activism in the early 1960s and took part in a number of marches and protests. She temporarily returned to acting in 1969, appearing in *Death of a Gunfighter* as the love interest of white actor Richard Widmark. She would appear in just one more film, *The Wiz*, a 1978 adaptation of the all-black Broadway musical *The Wizards of Oz*, in which she played Glinda the Wood Witch. However, she didn't stop singing. On June 13, 1917. Lena Cohen was born in Brooklyn. Her four grandparents were hardworking middle-class black people from Brooklyn. Lena Horn, then two years old, served as the cover girl for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People's Monthly Bulletin in October 1919. Her paternal grandparents, Edwin and Cora Horn, were early supporters of the organization. What do you think of Lena Horne's death? Leave your comments below this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get the latest news about other celebrities. Thank you and see you again.